Hi all, in this brief video, we will see the difference between cladistics and phenetics, the two terms that comes often in biology, especially in phylogeny as well as in evolutionary biology. So what is the difference between these two terms? So cladistics versus phenetics. So within the field of taxonomy, you see, the taxonomy is all about classification, right? Naming, classification and how the uh, you know the living organisms are related basically it's all about the current state of affairs but just by looking the overall similarity for example the two students might look quite similar and then they group them together and if the students looks quite different then they group them differently so it's all about the morphological similarity or the current state of similarity the morphology is all about the current state isn't it so if you look at the gross morphology and the, then the classify it then that is called the phonetic method or phonetic clustering method so at the, at the same time, the cladistic, it's very different. It's all about the assumptions about the ancestral relationship as well as the current data. So we have got current data, that is the morphology, plus the ancestral data, the character state, deeply conserved character state. So we'll have to see which character states are conserved, which are not conserved, you know. So only the conserved character states are used for phylogenetic reconstruction or taxonomy that is called the cladistic method. In the cladistic approach, the trees are drawn based upon the conserved character. That is a difference. So we'll have to see is the character is really conserved or not. So only the conserved characters are involved for uh, constructing the cladistic trees. So cladistic approach. So at the same time, the phonetic approach means the trees are based on some measure of the distance between the leaves. You know, so only based upon the distance or the current state of affairs or current similarity or morphological state that is called a phonetic method. So molecular phylogeny doesn't mean it's always cladistic or phonetic. It's, it's, it could be a mixed approach as well. So it just means that inferred data is molecular. Usually it's a sequence data. Most often time it's DNA sequence data. It can also be a, pro, a protein sequence, no amino acid pro, a sequence data as well. So it could be cladistics or phonetic. So it could be either of these. So molecular phylogeny or uh, just phylogenetic systematic doesn't mean that it's always phonetics. You know, that's why it's phylogenetic. So it's not that case. So it could be cladistics as well. So most likely it is cladistic. It's not really phonetics, you see. So what is the main difference here? As I told you already, both of the systems of the biological classification, both use similar features to group the organism. So only the similar features are used to group the organism, of course. It could be morphological similarity or it could be deeply conserved the molecular similarities. So the traditional taxonomy is usually phonetics. It's used uh, mostly to, uh, you know, by looking at the similar features to group the organisms into hierarchical levels called taxonomical groups. So uh, the, at the same time, the cladistics uses several shared features or shared derived characters to group the organisms by common ancestry. So it's much better for determining the relationship or deeply conserved relationship with, uh, between uh, the groups of taxonomic groups, you know. But the traditional system works only by looking at the, uh, you know, the morpho gross morphological character states. So similar features. So without uh, regarding about the evolutionary legacy. So that is for called uh, phonetic method. So phonetic methods are much more faster and convenient, but might not be accurate. So Linnaeus is one good example of a phoneticist. So phoneticist is the person who is working with the phonetic data or phonet, you know, phonetic systems. So Linnaeus is the Swedish taxon, the father of taxonomy, you see. So his genera were clustered into increasing broader related categories, families, classes, phyla and kingdoms. Although he didn't believe in evolution by descent, this pattern does provide a framework for thinking about the evolution from a common ancestor. See that Linnaeus preceded uh, the Darwin, right? It's, he, he was in uh, basically in 18th century while Darwin was in 19th century. So. Uh, he was not aware of the developments. I mean, of course, the Darwin wasn't even born the time of the Linnaeus. So uh, still, you know, subconsciously, his uh, classification system perfectly re reflects how the organisms are actually being evolved because, uh, you know, the, the gross morphological similarities uh, to a certain extent uh, explained by the evolution. For him, the relatedness means the propinquity in the creator's design. So uh, the prevailing theory of evolution during his time was, uh, you know, the uh, special theory of creation or uh, intelligent design, right? So it's something called phonetic clustering is nothing but just 
uh, group or cluster uh, the group of taxa into increasingly broader or higher higher uh, hierarchical level all through looking at the, uh, the gross morphological similarity so that is called the phonetic clustering at the same time darwin was a cladist of course he is a founding uh, father or figure of the cladistics so this is his own statement uh, from the origin of species published in 1859 the natural system based on descent with modification the characters that naturalists consider are showing true affinity are those which have been inherited from a common parent and in so far as all true classification is genealogical that the community of descent is common bond that naturalists have been seeking so it's a natural classification system the cladistics while phonetics is artificial that's a one major difference between cladistics and uh, phonetics so phonetic methods are usually computer algorithms that based on phonetic model rely on the distance method to build uh, trees from the sequence data so usually as i told you phonetic versus cladistics both are nothing but algorithm different kinds of algorithm that they use it for phonetics uh, these are something called distance method so basically it starts with a distance matrix so if you give the dna sequence from different taxa first you will have to align it into a multiple sequence and within this multi uh, from the multiple sequence alignment you are calculating the distance between uh, any paired uh, taxa for example if you consider like 10 different plants you know and then you can calculate the distance between each of the pairs all uh, you know all different kinds of pairs you can calculate by uh, a permutation formula right so all kinds of pairs how much is the distance then you can arrange that into a matrix like the distance matrix that you can see it in a geographical map so it's something like distance matrix that you can see when you look at the geographical map for example delhi to mumbai delhi to bangalore or delhi to kolkata or delhi to chennai so it, it would be same delhi to chennai would be same that chennai to delhi isn't it so that is why the distance matrix if you see is typically you know it is something like a triangular shape because it is a mirror image the other side of the triangle so this distance matrix is instead of the cities in a geographical space uh, here it is the just the uh, the, con, uh, the sequences the dna sequences that is being used so the gene uh, a in different species we are sequencing and the difference between these sequence length uh, of the two pair tax size what is being calculated so that is called the distance method because these methods the input is a distance matrix uh, of the uh, molecular sequence alignment so phonetic methods count each base of the sequence difference equally so a single event that creates a large change in sequence for example insertion or deletion or a recombination will not move uh, you know it will move two sequences far apart on the final a tree because each mutation has got same uh, probability you see so uh, the importance given for each mutation is exactly same but as you see that these are hugely it actually frame shift mutations have got uh, you know huge impact so it should have a differential weight but that is not being uh, the case in the phonetic method so it is not that accurate so phonetic approaches generally lead to a faster algorithm but they can often have nicer statistical properties for molecular data you see so it is so much faster and it will actually produce one tree instead of millions of tree like in cladistic method here the phonetic method simply give you one tree and it's much faster so you know naturally you think like okay this is the most convenient it produced just one tree but the problem is that the tree might not be optimal in most cases it's not the best tree you see it is just that you are it's very convenient but you are sacrificing the quality you know the optimality so it is not a robust method but it's much more faster so still it's very good because uh, if you're comparing the whole genome uh, you might need to do uh, much faster you know uh, you just want to make an overall picture first before uh, attempting to do the finer details so in that case uh, phonetic methods works perfectly fine phonetic method is popular with molecular evolution because it relies heavily on the objective character data such as sequences and it requires relatively few assumptions so uh, you know as assumptions are less that means it's really simple so 
you know it is it usually it is uh, uh, much more faster to do that and the things will not change much you know the, the, the not much of the parameters you know and uh, error rates are much lesser as the parameters increase as the model complexity increase then uh, the error is also increased proportionately right so here the error rate is less but uh, the, the final tree is highly erroneous that is a big problem with the phonetic method at the same time, the cladistic method, uh, you know, the evolutionary relationships are documented by creating a branching structure named a phylogeny or tree that illustrates the relationship between the sequences, right? So it is basically directly connected with the evolutionary theory of the Charles Darwin. So cladistic methods construct a tree or known as cladogram by considering the various possible pathways of evolution and choose from among these the best possible tree so among different pathways different trees uh, the best tree is being selected so it's not just one tree the final output uh, millions of trees most probably and of these millions you will have to choose the one so there are actually much method heuristic methods available to simplify this task a phylogram is a tree with branches that are proportional to the evolutionary distances calculated by the phylogenetic inference. So, if the, the tree lengths are, trees are drawn in such a way that the branch lengths are proportional to the distance uh, between the pairs of sequence, then that is called a phylogram. So, as you see, usually the phylograms and cladogram, but just by looking, you see the difference. So, on the top, this, this one is basically the, the cladogram because it has got this kind of um, triangular shape, right? So the cladograms show the branching order where the branch lengths are generally meaningless unless calculated with the methods such as C14 dating. So this length of this branch uh, doesn't make sense in cladogram. It's only the, the topology makes sense. Topology is nothing but the branching order. You know, so the topology only topology makes sense. So, what does that mean? The topology here we can simply say that bacteria two and three are much more related than either with one, because this two forms a clade. So, this kind of topological conclusions you can draw from a cladogram. Branch lengths are drawn uh, proportional substitutions. So, then branch length is also drawn. Then uh, it is called the phylogram. So, basically, the phylograms are a lot more informative than the cladogram. You can see that uh, a, a eukaryote 2 is further from the MRC or most recent common ancestor separating eukaryote 3 and 2 because the branch length is a lot more because the branch length is more drawn proportional to the evolution or the substitutions per site. Uh, this branch is uh, a lot more further from the common ancestor. So those kind of conclusions you can make out of phylograms as well in addition to the topology. Of course, it has got topological feature as shown in the cladogram as well. So phylogenetics is nothing but an evolutionary theory that states that the groups of similar organisms are descended from a common ancestor. You see, it's the Darwin's theory of evolution. So the phylogenetics is a statistical and computational concept in which, uh, you know, it's, it's a method in which we are constru constructing the tree or rather reconstructing the tree that reflects how the organisms or, or the genes have evolved. You see, it's, it's just the illustration statistical illustration of the evolutionary uh, process. So phylogenetic systematics is a method of taxonomic classification based on their evolutionary history. So evolutionary history is taken into consideration of tax taxonomy while classifying that is called the phylogenetic systematics. Today's current gold standard on taxonomic, uh, taxonomy is taxonomic systematics or phylogenetic systematics. So the phylogenetic systematics was developed by Willy Hennig this gentleman, uh, he, he was a German entomologist in 1950s. So if you see what is phylogeny, it's very simple. Phylogeny is nothing but a type of a pedigree or a genealogy, but it shows the relationship between species, not really individuals. So it reconstructs a pattern of events leading to the distribution on diversity of life. So life on the planet or the biodiversity can be arranged in a phylogenetic tree like structure. Right? So this is what you call it as the tree of life. So it reconstructs the patterns of events leading to the distribution and diversity of life, which is often shown as a network or a tree. So it is not always tree, but it can also be a reticulate system, the network style as well. So it's a family tree of the living organisms. As you can see in this tree, uh, the common ancestor of all living organisms is this uh, last universal common ancestor or LUCA of which you can see bacteria then archaea bacteria and eukaryotes 
So among the eukaryotes, animals, plants and fungi, right? So this kind of classification is what you call the tree of life. So one of the earliest phylogenetic tree illustrations was from uh, Charles Darwin's notebook. So if you look at this notebook, the copy, you can still find it in Natural History Museum in London. So if you look at this, you, you can see it here. I think this is his own, uh, you know, Darwin's own handwriting. So as you can see that B and C is a lot more similar than either with A. You know, so that is what uh, it's it's written here. So in summary, cladistics and phonetics are two different conceptual approaches for constructing the tree or classifying the organism. So phonetics on one hand is all about the current state of affairs, disregarding what has happened in the past. At the same time, cladistics is all about the evolutionary legacy. So cladistics tend to be much more accurate and much more natural. At the same time, phonetics is much more faster, though it is not that accurate. See you in next video.